Range Rover bringing the essence of luxury similar to a BMW, a Mercedes, an Audi, but giving a twist of off-road performance. Land Rover of Lakeland gives us the 2023 Range Rover Velar. R Dynamic S in Fiji white. A smooth ride with a fashion statement, a new HSE also is implemented this year will be the top trim. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The Range Rover Velar has the dynamic front and it mimics the bigger Range Rover in which you could still ford through water nearly 21 inches with coil springs, almost 22 inches with air suspension. You get the LED headlamps and daytime runnings. You get the iconic grille. Our dynamic black exterior pack adds the black contrast roof, gloss black roof rails. We have the added front fog lights. Clearance at 8.43 with coil springs, 8.07 with air suspension. Approach angle at 23.6 for coil springs, 22.5 degrees for air suspension. In the signature image that you get with this, we have air suspension, 22 inch gloss black alloy wheels, adaptive air suspension, four wheel independent suspension. You get the gloss black on the whole lower and it gives a pinstripe down the doors and on the lower skirt, also highlighting where an air vent would be on the side. Maximum roof load capacity at 174 pounds. Curb weight, 4,130 pounds. As the proportions keep that fashion statement when we're looking at rival perspective, whether it's Audi or BMW, they have a more dynamic stance, but Range Rover has that essence of class, which puts itself in another level. In the MSRP, when you get these, you can spec it out for the base price of a BMW or an Audi. You may not have what they do underneath the hood for performance, but all around capabilities this is going to have, which they do not. A length at 188.9 inches, wheelbase at 113 inches. Off-road departure angle goes up by 4.7 inches for your air suspension. The spoiler that drops down into your rear window hides the windshield wiper. And I like the dynamic setup that they have with your shark fin antenna because it really stresses aerodynamic lines, LED tail lights that go into the side panels and on the lower, all gloss black. Power lift gate going into 34.4 cubic feet with a spare tire that's tucked underneath. You have some storage on the side and you can lower or raise that air suspension in the back to make it easier for your loading. Max towing at 5,991 pounds. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-20-40 split, increasing your cargo to 70.1 cubic feet. Four cylinder, 2.0 turbo. Let's go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust now. And even though this is the smallest power variant, you still get some exhaust note out of it. It's obviously not going to be dynamic in that league, but it is on and off road. And they back the performance with a 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder P250 producing 247 horsepower and 269 pound feet of torque. That's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, achieving 20 to 26 MPGs with a zero to 60 around 7.1 seconds and a top speed at 135 miles per hour. And what do those numbers illustrate? 
that you can get to the interstate without any issues. You can pick up your groceries and you're gonna do it fast enough with a fashion statement. The Grand Cherokee or Ford Bronco will not get the luxury that's going to be encased in this. When you look at Mercedes, BMW, or Audi, it will not have the dynamic drive that this will for off-road performance. This is going to be able to conquer both sides of the world. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Range Rover Velar. As we go into the interior, Go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Range Rover Velar, you're gonna receive 38.2 inches of headroom, 40.3 inches of legroom, ebony perforated grain leather, 12-way power adjustment for the front seats. They're heated seats. You can option ventilated seats. You get the pattern structure on the dashboard, the black veneers that's going to go in the center and across the whole dash around your air vents with the satin aluminum 10 inch Pivi Pro is going to be stationed on the top with your navigation. And we got the pinch and the swipe. Click it to the home button. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Click onto this, this is more or less your off-road page. So you can see everything for your approach and departure angle, and it is live. And you can go into your terrain information, which has a lot of different settings. So I'll start with the dynamics, and you can just pause and read them if you like. You got your comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, Going down onto the lower screen, this is going to be derived to make it easier for you to do your terrain response. Also, you have your multi-use buttons. So when you push it in, you have your heated seats. This one does not have ventilated. You will have your climate control. When you push onto here, this will change it so you can change the speed for your climate control. To raise and lower the suspension, working down, you'll have a palm holder for your gear lever. Push the Land Rover and you'll have a cup holder here. And this is more or less just a little storage area that you could pretty much put your key fob. More sport derived, you can slide it forward, so hide the key fob, and you can open up one section at a time. You get two USB ports inside. It is a pretty deep storage and not too bad in the width. Going onto your three spoke leather wrap steering wheel, multi function and multi functionality and it does different settings for your gauge cluster. The dash does go into the door panel. Everyday materials are going to be on the top. You'll get that pattern that was on the dashboard, the black veneer, one touch up and down for all your windows, memory seat for the driver. You have three settings, more sport derived for your elbows, a smaller storage pocket, and it's a little narrow. For the back seats, I'm at 38 inches of headroom, 37.2 inches of legroom, six foot three, it's not too much of an issue. Get your air vents in the center, 12 volt, storage beyond both of the front seats. The door panel, get your everyday materials, and I like the pattern that comes into the back with the black veneers. More sporty for your elbows, large speaker grill, and a smaller storage pocket. Sitting into the center, headroom is no issue, nor is legroom. Feet space is a little bit of an issue because the rails are too far back for the driver and passenger seat. But in shoulder space ends up being used because of this. And if they would have just moved it maybe two or three inches, we would have been no problem fitting three adults and you wouldn't have to play footsie. 247 horsepower, 269 pound-feet of torque with a 2.0 liter four-cylinder turbocharged. You can still do some maneuverability off-roading and it's gonna be a smooth drive because we have adaptive suspension. I would probably just leave it into the comfort setting because this is not crazy rugged terrain, but you can ford through nearly 21 inches of water, which what luxury vehicle you know that has this much tech and this much luxury can do that. This year we do receive the HST, which is 395 horsepower, inline six cylinder turbocharged and supercharged, which, I mean, you see the capabilities that the P250 already does. Do you need all that extra power? Obviously it's going to be something that increases the price tag. The nice thing about this where it's set at and it's spec. You're in the $70,000 margin in which if you're looking at any of the rivals, you're going to start escalating in order to get some of the performance that this has. Obviously on the road, this is not going to be the fastest oriented vehicle, but it's still faster than a daily commute vehicle and it's still quiet in the interior with upgraded 22 inch wheels.
it's a settled drive. You get a little touch of that exhaust note that comes in and it's not really like a drone note like you would get in maybe a Discovery. And it's not as long as a Discovery either. Obviously you're not getting third rows, but you still have good cargo capacity and towing. And this is going to take me to the three things I like and three things that I dislike. We're going to go over that right now, starting with what I like. Three things. I would have to say that this is one of those unique vehicles because you really have a hard time saying who's a competition or a rival. Obviously, you could say Lexus, you could say Infiniti, Mercedes, BMW, the list can really go on forever. But when you're really looking at the technology, the luxury, the capabilities on and off road, it's really hard because then you would start talking about a Jeep or you would talk about a Bronco in which you're not going to capture all of that in which you do in this, especially at a $70,000 price point. The second thing that I like is you could pivot the Pivi Pro to make it where the sunlight doesn't reflect on it. The last thing that I like is you do not have to option the inline six turbo supercharged engine in order to get all of the maneuverabilities that you really want to do any of those performance on or off road. So you can get the base model, spec it out, and you have better gas consumption in which usually I would say, you know, I would go to the inline six, but in this case, might as well save the money and go on a nice weekend vacation and take your Range Rover with you. Three things that I dislike starts off in the back seats. The rails for the passenger and driver's seat are right in the middle. So if you're sitting in the middle, it's no happy medium. You're going to play a lot of footsie. The second thing that I dislike is on the steering wheel. To adjust it, it is on the right side. Why? Because this is made in England. I understand, but just turn it around. The steering wheel is also on the right side in England and you had to move it here. So just move that mechanism as well. And a brake check. If you need to, you can really go through that front windscreen, which is sleek, by the way. Push back, chunky A pillars. You get the long hood. Turn radius at a stop point is going to receive about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. And you see what I mean? You can keep up with the traffic. The last thing that I dislike is the option spec sheet. We don't even have a 360 degree reverse camera in this car and we're at a $70,000 price point. I uh, can understand you need to add packages, but there's just a lot of packages. You don't even get standard fog lights. You got to add that. It's only $250, but it's not only $250. When you get into a Range Rover, you're wanting to get all of this extra bonus because this is a car that should make you feel special for your everyday use with this powertrain you're going to be hitting about two and a half to three rpm so you will be hearing that engine a little bit more often than some of my liking but it's not too bad of an exhaust note if you're under two RPMs, it feels like it's a little bit heavier of a vehicle. The savings that you're getting, you have to take also in consideration because you're not going to get everything that we have in this with that price point in a bigger engine. So you're gonna have to do a give or take. If you want all this, then you're gonna either get the smaller engine or you're gonna have to pay a little bit more for the more powerful variant. I'd like to thank Land Rover Lakeland for giving us this 2023 Range Rover Velar P250 our dynamic s for our car review if you're already a subscriber thank you for being part of the hawkeye community if not i don't know what you're waiting for click the next video and the subscribe button check out the merchandise instagram and website and everything we do here at hawkeye rides